is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do car truck and suv reviews on youtube today we are in the new 2020 ford raptor courtesy of bob ruth ford in dillsburg pa and what a beautiful day to be reviewing a raptor it is supposed to snow all day today it's going to make for some beautiful shots and also at the same time really put the raptor to the test in the snow as quite often people do get this vehicle for the snow and of course off-roading etc but having said all that what do you say let's go ahead and just jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so to start msrp for the 2020 raptor will start at fifty three thousand two hundred and five dollars and that is for the super cab setup if you were to add the crew cab setup that goes for fifty six thousand one hundred ninety dollars and of course there's going to be several different options you can tack on to this one and i'll go over those of course as we go on in the video it's so, but regardless Regardless of which cab setup that you go with for the Raptor power plant on this beast will be the same. Powering this one is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 putting out 450 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 510 pound feet of torque available at 3,500 RPM, power sent to all four wheels through a 10 speed automatic with magnesium paddle shifters, which you guys know, even in the snow, we of course will be testing out in a little bit here, zero to 60 time approximately 5.1 seconds in this heavy truck that is quite amazing and by the way that's a car and driver number by the way in case anybody doesn't believe me mpg numbers coming in at 15 in the city 18 on the highway of course taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we test out anything on this beast i did want to mention there are some drive modes of course coming standard on the raptor including normal sport slippery tow and haul mode sand and snow mode Baja and a rock crawl mode. So really you can adjust the Raptor for just about any scenario that you could possibly think of going in in the Raptor. And so essentially what all those drive modes are gonna do is adjust things like the throttle response, shift point, steering sensitivity, traction control, and really whether or not the power is sent to the rear wheels or all four wheels. So, so essentially it's really meant to optimize grip in just about any situation or in some cases not optimize grip like in Baja mode, but nonetheless. Having said all of that, to put it in full manual shift mode what you want to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back that is going to give me full control over the paddle shifters here so what do you say let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here and let's see how quickly they're going to react for us nice oh my goodness paddle shifters that react quick in a truck who would have thought there would ever be such a thing that was that was amazing and they're magnesium too a lot of power shifters these days even in my mustang gt are plastic even in luxury vehicles like audi they're plastic but in the Ford Raptor, they're magnesium, they're heavy duty, they're legit. They are real paddle shifters and they react quickly in a truck. I just can't get over that, that's so amazing, I gotta be honest, but to take it out of that manual shift mode, just push the shifter back up into the drive mode there and that's gonna get full control back to the Raptor. And I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test in the snow and let's see what kind of grip we get quite honestly and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right you guys let's come to a stop here and here we go grip well done all right <laughs> i'm not gonna do anything too crazy but well done raptor wow there was no slippage whatsoever in this wet mucky snow that we're in that was that was brilliant <laughs> Definitely confidence building, that was nice. And so, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.7 inch rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, I guess since there's absolutely nobody on the road right now, let's go ahead and just hit the brakes here. Brilliant, even in the snow, my goodness, this truck continues to impress, that was, that was awesome. <laughs> Touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone front suspension with cast aluminum lower control arms and Fox Racing shocks, which of course were carried over from 2019. In the back, a leaf spring style rear suspension, once again, adaptive Fox Racing shocks. And let me let me elaborate a little bit on those Fox shocks because they really are a game changer for the Raptor, honestly. And so the Raptor's always been very off-road capable, really nice suspension, but the Fox shocks that were introduced for the 20 
2019 model year, they really changed it. They made it even better because these Fox dampers continuously adjust in real time and Fox calls it live valve technology. This not only delivers a smoother ride, but it's also going to tighten up the suspension during heavy cornering. And it really is just going to allow you to take full control, full advantage of the Raptors 13 plus inches of suspension travel, including automatically stiffening the suspension in mid air. If you're doing any jumps in the Raptor or anything like that to avoid bottoming out. So really the adaptive Fox racing shocks are just that they're adaptive. They're going to constantly adjust, really giving you the benefit of whatever kind of situation that you're in. So that's why they're brilliant. But nonetheless, really what impresses me the most, because I still think most people are going to be using this more so on a regular driving basis, as opposed to mostly off-roading, the ride quality is brilliant as well. So like I said, because of those adaptive shocks really does give you the best of both worlds. The ride quality is certainly right on point. So no issues there for me in the Raptor. And a lot of times that's hard to say in a truck. So I definitely am a big fan of that. As far as steering feel goes, it is a little bit more on the weightier side, certainly not even close to as weighty as my Mustang GT, but I do like the steering feel and the grips are super thick as well. These and two grips definitely give you a little extra confidence a little better feeling of being in control so i'm a big fan of that as well cabin noise is just fine as well certainly no issues there it's pretty much as expected and touching on visibility you're really not going to have any issues with the truck when it comes to visibility i can see perfectly fine out the side mirrors as well as the rear view mirror there as well so definitely no issues there and I did want to mention rain sensing windshield wipers they are going to be optional we do actually have that option today but that's really nice too it allows you to focus more on driving they're kind of like automatic headlights they're going to automatically turn on whenever it detects any kind of moisture on the windshield so that is definitely a plus as well but now that we pull up to our location for the exterior, let's go ahead and take a look at the outside of this one in the snow. Yes, I'm gonna freeze my butt off, but this is gonna be fun. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior here of this new 2020 Ford Raptor. All right, so here she is, you guys, the 2020 Ford Raptor. And so let me first start by mentioning the couple new colors for 2020, including iconic silver, lead foot, and currently what you were looking at right now called rapid red. This rapid red, by the way, looks absolutely amazing in the snow today, so definitely a fan. But so anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. You will find a unique front grille, of course, for the Raptor with Ford block lettering. Of course, just above it, integrated into that front grille, marker lights as well. There's those three amber lights at the top there, definitely distinguishing itself from all the other F-150s out there. It looks amazing. To the sides, quad beam LED headlights with black housings coming standard. They will, of course, come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they're going to turn on automatically for there, so you never have to worry about that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. Heavy-duty front skid plates. You guys can kind of see that just down below. That is, of course, when you're going off-road, it doesn't mess up any of the undercarriage. That's definitely a plus as well. Two front tow hooks can also be found up front. They're going to be finished in black, kind of integrated into those front skid plates there now let me jump up to the top real quick here you guys can see there are some hood air extractors as well so perhaps not quite as big as the new GT 500 but still they're there and they are functional of course so that is definitely going to be a plus as well so let me mention one more thing before we head around to the side here you guys I saw this the other day there are some LED aftermarket lights available for this little area they are so bright but they look so good with these LED lights so did want to mention that and of course you can put LEDs up top and everything and there are are actually aux switches built in that are for nothing right now but that are set up for that kind of thing so I'll get more into that a little bit later but now let's go ahead and make our way to this side on this one here Rear privacy glass coming standard across the board, of course. When it comes to those side mirrors, they come standard as black side mirrors, power adjustable, and they will come standard heated with LED integrated turn signals no matter what route that you go with. However, I did want to mention there are body color side mirrors that are optional. Also LED mirror spotlights for an additional $175. Let's say if you're going hunting bright and early in the morning and it's still dark out that's going to help you out a little bit there as well and now let's take a step back here a little bit you actually get black side door handles that's going to be the standard setup so if you do go with the standard setup for the raptor i would probably say black is the best exterior option in my opinion it's going to kind of all blend in quite nicely but of course this rapid red raptor is uh completely optioned out so we got just about everything on it but of course you have some flared out front fenders with air extractors once again definitely look good and once again functional as well cast aluminum running 
cutting boards down below they are very heavy duty and they uh definitely help me get into this one as well with those cast aluminum running boards i like that they actually have raptor towards the end of it as well so that's a nice little nice little touch that ford didn't have to do but they did taking a look down at the wheel setup standard setup is going to be 17 inch cast aluminum wheels with bf goodrich all-terrain tires of course, that is the setup you are looking at right now, but I did want to mention there is an optional setup, 17 inch forged aluminum bead lock wheels. They go for around $1,900 if you are interested there, but I did want to mention that as well. And by the way, the Raptor graphics found on the exterior of this one, they look very good, but they are an option. They, that is not something that comes standard in this one. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. I love these LED taillights to start here and they are LEDs by the way. So that's definitely a plus two. F-150 etched into the rear tailgate or Ford block lettering. That is an optional setup you were looking at right now. But once again, dual rear tow hooks finished in black, just like the front. If you're curious if there was a spare tire, it is found underneath there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully you can, but there is a spare tire underneath. That's always a plus. I've also seen optional setups where you can kind of mount it right up there. That looks pretty sick as well. But nonetheless, you do have a towing setup back here, four and seven pin connectors, of course, and 6,000 pound towing capacity with the Super Cab, 8,000 pound for the super crew cab that we have today and of course to the sides dual exhaust outlets with black tips they are some massive tips too that's pretty cool but nonetheless i think you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So but now since we are around back of the Raptors, you go ahead and open that rear tailgate. You of course have the manual method of opening it up. Once opened up, I will say there is an option I always like mentioning with Ford F-150s and Raptors, of course, there's a tailgate assist step that goes for $375. I've actually used that plenty of times. It's definitely helpful to go about getting in the bed of this one. So if you're using this a lot of times for an actual pickup truck, hauling stuff to the dump or picking up a Christmas tree or whatever, it definitely makes things a lot easier. I will say that again, that's three $175 if you wanted that option but five and a half foot bed will come standard on the Raptor and that is the only setup for the Raptor as far as the bed size goes box link system is also going to come standard back there to help store ramps for storage bins etc there's a couple other things you can put back there LED tailgate lighting will come standard but LED box lighting is going to be an option for an additional $125 so the LED tailgate lighting being the uh, the lighting up top there but the box lighting of course being down below but again 125 $25 there. Drop in bed liner for $350. Spray in bed liner that you're looking at right now for $595. That's the option I would go with. But overall, five and a half foot bed is really probably more than enough for just about everything that you want to use a truck for. Um, if you needed a larger bed, go with the F-150. You can always get a larger bed there or F-250, F-350, whatever. But Make your way to the rear legroom. That's going to come in at 33.5 inches for the Super Cab. However, if you go with the Super Crew Cab that you're looking at right now, that comes in at 43.6 inches. That's probably the most rear legroom that's available out there on the market, really, in any vehicle right now. It's absolutely amazing, even luxury vehicles. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there, a ton of it. If you didn't want to use those rear seats, if you had a massive or something you wanted to put back there, those rear seats do fold up. It's a 60-40 flip-up bench seat. So once again, certainly enough space to put your super large dog or dinosaur or tools or whatever back there. Heated rear seats can be had with the 802A luxury package, which we do of course have today. Rear center armrest with cup holders will actually come standard, love that. Rear ventilation also coming standard back there. You have a 400 watt power outlet back there as well. So you can charge up your tools perhaps from job to job. I don't know if you're using this for a work truck or not. I, it's a Raptor, but nonetheless, it's still cool to have that 12 volt power outlet, two USB charging ports back there as well. Some coat hooks on the top there. So rear seats definitely have it going on. But anyways, let's make our way to the front now. Eight way power driver's seat with a cloth finish is gonna be the standard setup. And by the way, that does come with power lumbar adjustment as well. 10-way power adjustable driver and passenger seats with the leather finish come with the 80 
401a package by the way that goes for three thousand seven hundred and eighty five dollars this is probably the one package i would add if it were me i'd go with the base setup with this one package just because it does give you the leather seating the power adjustable passenger seat also power adjustable pedals and a power sliding rear window i think that's kind of a necessity for a truck that's just my personal opinion but you can adjust that by using the uh, button on the roof of the raptor here just in front of the aux switches there but that's going to be how you're going to open and close that one but raptor lettering of course can be found on the top of the seats and they are heated and ventilated seats with that 802a package once again and overall the seats are plenty comfortable certainly didn't have any issues there but taking a look at the steering wheel now it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped and if you go with the 802a package it is heated for those super cold snowy days in pennsylvania like today i do like the uh the red marking at the top of the steering wheel as well and there is some raptor lettering at the bottom so it is a perforated leather of course since we have a heated steering wheel so steering wheel is definitely a very nice setup on this one no issues for me but let's go ahead and make our way to the start up here and let me of course start by showing you guys the key here you do have your raptor lettering on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch, and that times two button is actually your remote start, which is an option for $195, a standalone option if you wanted it. But also notice, though, the, uh, the buttons on the one side are a kind of darker finish than all the other Ford key fobs, like the Mustang, for instance, or the Echo Sport or uh, Expedition. All the other key fobs have more of a chrome-like finish. This kind of has a dark chrome-like finish, so... I don't know, it's just a little observation I had there. Push button start is gonna come with the 802A package, of course, and that is what we have today. So all I am going to do, simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is all the way to your right. There is a really large digital display front and center actually, and to control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there. Of course, you have a digital speedometer if you wanted to display that. There's also things like your towing status, your off-road status, that's perhaps my favorite part. It's gonna tell you what angle the wheels are at, what angle the whole Raptor is at, if you're going up a mountain perhaps, that's pretty cool. You can also adjust your safety settings up there of course you got trip a trip b average fuel economy and the list goes on anyways let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality twin panel moonroof being an option that we have today for $1,495 and that goes all the way into the back so even the rear passengers have a view of the sky that's always nice dual zoom climate control coming standard with the 802a package of course there's grab handles absolutely everywhere since this Raptor does sit quite high up comparatively speaking to other trucks out there ice blue ambient lighting for the 802a package you can adjust the colors like you can in the mustang but it is ice blue so that's pretty cool universal garage door opener coming standard with the 802a package once again and those garage door buttons are going to be located on the driver's side sun visor by the way for up to three different garage doors there but so i kept mentioning it let me actually show it to you guys now there are six auxiliary switches found on the roof here of the raptor and of course they are going to be for when you add aftermarket lighting or aftermarket accessories to the Raptor, you can hook them up directly to these aux switches. That's kind of cool that Ford anticipated this truck being modified in some way or form and they prepared it for that by putting those aux switches up there. So that's always a plus. And just in front of that, of course, you have your overhead sunglass holder if you wanted to use that as well. But overall, Raptor is definitely finished quite nicely, quite nicely for a truck, I should say at least. Just in front of the shifter, there is a fairly large storage area with two USB charging ports right there. Just to the right of the shifter, you have a little rubberized storage area, perhaps for a cell phone maybe. And then you have your dual cup holders with ice blue ambient lighting at the very bottom of them, of course then as far as that center armrest goes just underneath of it there is perhaps the most massive storage area i've ever experienced in any reviews and of course you have a pull out tray with places where you can store your quarters nickels dimes and pennies as well and all of this having a rubberized bottom so things aren't inclined to slide around as much and that's always a plus when you have an off-road vehicle because things do slide around of course unless you have those rubberized bottoms and of course you have your pen holders not one but two pen holders dare you put pencils in that and Ford will find you and within that massive storage area in the middle there you do have a 12 volt power outlet in there as well so ton 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 of storage there then just above the passenger side glove box a little tray area perhaps to store some nuts and bolts 
bolts or screws or whatever it really isn't that much of an area but inside the glove box there you have your standard glove box and then you have a separate storage area up top for the owner's manual nonetheless let's go ahead and make our way now to the tech display front and center eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard aka sync 3 bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard with that android auto and apple carplay as well meaning if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the raptor you have free navigation through that smartphone as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs up there factory navigation system is going to be an option for 795 dollars if you wanted that you can of course check out your climate control settings and adjust your climate control settings up there as well as your radio settings of course and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will get seven speakers coming standard on the raptor however there is an optional 10 speaker bang and olfson sound system with the 802a package that has 750 watts that is nuts and that is the one we have today so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Dang, the loudness was ridiculous. Bass is plenty enough for the Raptor, really. That's how systems where it's at, and there's speakers everywhere in this thing because of that Bang & Olsen sound system. So definitely quite nice there. Last thing I wanted to mention on that tech display, though, is when you do put the Raptor in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard, of course. However, there is a 360 degree camera available for an additional $375. That is currently what you are looking at right now. Of course, that is going to let you know who or what is behind you which of course is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags. Also in the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system also coming standard. Auto dimming rear view mirror, also standard, as well as a reverse sensing system. And so that's gonna be the sensors in the back there. So when you get too close to an object or another vehicle, it's gonna kind of beep at you, letting you know you're getting too close to something so you don't go hitting it. That's what I have on my Mustang. I actually do like that, it's very nice. Automatic high beams, also standard. I did wanna mention the 802A package does add a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And so that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in a new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.